G'day, and welcome to the Aussie walkabout of Dragon's Dogma, Dark Arisen. So, this game's been around for a while. It's been around since 2012. It's about 10 years old, but it's really kept its, kept its value. It's a great, fun little action RPG, and I thought we'd have a little toggle from start to finish and through the DLC of Dark Arisen. It's an interestingly weighted game, and so while you need one set of levels to do the main game, you really need a kind of much larger set of levels to do the DLC. So we're going to go through this in New Game Plus. So I've already finished the game. I'm coming through now in New Game Plus um, at level of around 110. Um, and that's because I want to play as a warrior character, a big two-handed weapon wielding character. Now they're one of the most disadvantaged characters in this game. <clears throat> they haven't got a ranged attack at all as countless lifetimes come to pass. The wonderful pleasure to be had in meaningless occupation from French symbolist poet Henri de Renier sets us up nicely for this game. A little bit of early 20th century modernism. So you can see, and I'm going to let you watch these beautiful cutscenes yourself. But now you've hopefully seen the dragon and we can think about who we're going to be. So what I've got going on is an orc kind of character. Now my only worry and I was never really sure about it. Let's have a little look-see. I want to see if, I, if that beard is long enough is my only concern. Would we rather have something like that? A bit scruffier. Or something plaited. Uh, yeah, it makes his lips look funny. Let's go with that. But aside from that, I've made him big. His name's Grug, because he's, he's an Aussie orc. And um, he's going to be a great big two-handed sword wielding, or two-handed um, hammer wielding maniac. Um, you can go and play with that little character creator forever. Just a, a couple of words of advice. Heavier characters um, can carry more stuff. Uh, lighter characters move quicker and use less stamina. Stamina's management is going to be super important in this game. So here we are at our little house in Cassidus. And then this bastard turns up and decides to wreck it all. This is the dragon Grigori. In keeping with the weirdly European aspect of the game with lots and lots and lots of allo allo sort of accents being bunged out by most of the characters. A weird combination of, I guess they're going for kind of medieval europe -y sort of thing. Now, being um, on hard mode, there's absolutely no point you trying to fight the dragon. Um, run straight into his fire breath. Okay, so now we're going to start the game proper. We're waking up <gasps> with a threat from the dragon saying, Come and fish me. So there we go. Take up arms, huh? Well, we is going to be a warrior and to be a warrior, that's a post-level 10 choice. So in this game, just a few little words of um, just ex explanatory stuff. First of all, you have to choose a particular vocation. So you can't be a jack of all trades or anything like that. You've got to pick a vocation. Secondly, um, and I'm just going to show you, you can save your own game, so I'm going to. Secondly, you get one set of vocation options between levels 1 and 10. And then... You get a second level, a second set of vocation options after level 10. Now, the vocations themselves level up your various attributes like hit points, strength, 
stamina, stuff like that. They level those things up according to the vocation. So it's like a job. If you're, you know, if you're a fighter, then you're gonna every time you level up, you're gonna get more hit points, you're gonna get more some attack points, but you're not gonna get much stamina and you're not gonna get much magic at all. So what I want to do is be a warrior. So initially, I'm gonna pick fighter, and you can see I've actually leveled a few of these guys up already. Um, but actually, I think I might want Strider. Nah, we'll go with Fighter. Nah, we'll go with Strider. I don't want to have, I don't want a shield. So we're going to level up as a Strider, which is like a bow and dagger kind of person. But don't worry, we're only going to be this character for you know a tiny amount of time. So now just a, a little bit of, a little bit of advice on how the thing works. <clears throat> First of all, you've got those great big flags that pop down telling you to do stuff. Secondly, time. Time moves in this game. So I don't know if you can see the light coming in there is actually slowly moving because the sun is moving across the sky. And there are other there are times in the game, yeah, if you look at the shadow on the floor, you can see that it's actually progressing. Um, and so there's plenty of quests in the game where you have to meet somebody and you can only sort of rest until morning. So you've got to hang around till midday. Whenever you approach anyone in this game, literally anyone, you can chat to them. So if, if, and it'll flash the little speak button there that says, oh, the horror. I can chat to Chavez, who's a bit worried and upset about the dragon attack. Why is this happening? What's wrong with you, Estevan? Harden up, buttercup. <coughs> and if you approach other stuff, like jars and bottles and things, you can grab them or you can take them. Over here, if you see, and it's done very well in this game, I reckon. Um, if you see things slightly glowing, you can you can grab them. So, in this game, a lot of health is going to happen because um, you eat health curatives, and when you eat health curatives, they come in various types and shapes. But I'll show you those as we pick them up later on. You can see on the little mini map on the bottom left hand corner a circle. And that's your goal. That's your that's your target. That's where you got to go for the quest you're on right now. now. If you click options on the PS4 Pro, I don't know what it is on the Xbox um, or anything else, but this thing, you know, out the door for ten bucks on on PlayStation. So I'd pick it up and use a PS4. Over here, you can see quests, and you can see newly arisen um, quest successful. I face the dragon and save the village. And here, Tarry no longer leave the room. Okay, well, let's do that. We come out here, and we find Adaro and his daughter Kina having a chat about me. They're worried about me. I'm worried about her, mate. So you can see they're all worried about me because I, you know, sort of had my heart ripped out of my chest and I'm kind of still here. So I get it. I get why they're worried, but, you yeah, know. So, I'm going to chat to Kina. You should be abed. I wish you would not strain yourself so. I am worried for you, cuz. Now you can exhaust her dialogue here. The chief says your injury could be a curse from the dragon. If so, that's not something I know how to heal. There must be a way. You were not the only one to suffer the wrath of the worm, cuz. There were many wounded. Others. Some were not so fortunate. The whole village was worried about you. They'd be well relieved to see you up and ah, Good on them. You might go and see the others. If you yeah, look, I don't mind saying hi to the village. You fight for this village. And here I sit with my hands at my sides. Oh, calm down. I'm so very helpless. It's okay, Kena. Don't worry about it, mate. I tremble to think what the dragon might have wrought without your brave defiance. Well... A village burned to a cinder or swept to sea like so much driftwood. We all of us appreciate your sacrifice. That's very nice here. Praise the maker your home was left standing. 
Yeah, that's true. Though I am pleased to say most of the damage caused by the attack has been mended by now. Hurrah! We've buried our new dead at the church. Oh, so yeah. <coughs> yeah, I will. Yeah, no, 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 trust me. Sure. I fear we know precious little of your condition. I only ask you not take your wellness as license for wildness. Be careful. And with that lovely little alliteration, we're done. Pick up the flask of oil, because in this game you're going to have a lantern, and that lantern actually requires a, you put oil in it, which makes perfect sense, but it's also one of those things which is a lovely touch. Green Warish is a herb that heals you. So if you come into your items, you can see what I've got here. It tells you what I'm wearing. And under curatives, at the moment all I've got is one herb that clears out poison. Very useful herb. Scrag of Beast, which I've ripped off some animal, which recovers a bit of stamina. Green Warish, which is a healing herb, and i got six of those. Now, herbs, that one and that one, last forever. Mushrooms last forever. Herbs last forever. Stuff in bottles lasts forever. Powders last forever. But anything organic, apples, berries, um, grapes, meat, that stuff, it's going to slowly go off. And when it goes off enough, it's going to poison you, and it'll tell you. So here on the table... There's a festival pie, which is of no use whatsoever. Uh, there's some, there's a jug, there's some berries, none of which we particularly care about. And that's it for this area. So once we've done that, had a look around, picked up your free green warish. There's some in the bedroom. Back out through there and outside into the town. And we get that beautiful, um, with the lovely piano shot of Cassidus and really they put a lot of effort into this game for 2012 that's fantastic I mean that's that's up there with you know something you'd see today <clears throat> so you can see that it's all looking lovely and fresh now one weird thing about the game just to sort of tell you straight up we live by the sea we are a seafaring village the DLC is on an island many of the parts of the map are surrounded by water However, there's no water travel in this game, and if you go into the water, you just die. There's a red mist that occurs to tell you you're about to die, and then you just die. So straight in here, we're going to see a chest. Now, chests are going to be your staple in this game. You can game the chests, and what I mean by that is you can save before the chest, and this works with any chest, and... If you've looked up online and you've ascertained what, what the options are for each chest, each chest has about four or five things that it rotates through. And so, you know, there's a percentage chance of getting X, Y, and Z out of each chest. So you can open it up. There's some cloud wine. But if you didn't like that and you wanted something else, you can quit without saving and reload the game and open up the chest again and you might get something different. I'm not going to worry too much about that. Um, I've also got an item that I'll pick up later called the God's Bane Sword. And the God's Bane Sword lets you do the same thing and it's designed for it. So it's a, it's a, it's a thing that the game wants you to do. Um, but the God's Bane Sword lets you just quit and restart without needing to go to all the hassle of quitting out of the game. It's just way faster. Um, and it is there on purpose because many of the... Um, wonderful armors and weapons in this game can only be acquired from chests and can only be acquired by gaming the chest because you've got like a 2% chance of getting it. So if you want the funky armors and the funky weapons, you're going to have to get used to doing that stuff. So here we are in Cassidus. Here's our town. We've got some fellas down here. We can say hi to any of them. Oh, it's you. The one that stood against the dragon when he sat on the village. Yeah, mate. I hear fearsome tell of your wounds. Is there all I can do for you? No, mate, I'm fine. Thanks for asking, though. Have you seen Cortez, cousin? No. I have not seen my brother since the dragon came. Uh, can't see Cortez, huh? And on the left we see someone with a green box on her head. And that means she offers us a quest. So let's have a little look-see and have a talk to her. Her name's Benita. I'd craft dressings for the wounded had I the makings. 
If only I'd known. Oh, Bonita. I need a favor. Oh, yep. Can you fetch the flowers I need from up Can do. Flowers? I'm your guy. I need more of the one you see there. And one other sort besides. The Will do. You can find, the better. Yeah, no worries. So we've got to go and find some flowers for Bonita, and you can see that she's gone red. And you can also see that even though it looks appetizing, they're not glowing, so you can't take any of those herbs. Can't go near the water for fear of monsters? Best you watch yourself. Ah, good advice. Thanks, mate. Now, the, the, um, the pawns and the other people in this game are going to give you advice <clears throat> to help you work out what to do if you haven't got a handy-dandy walkthrough like this one. Walk towards the gate, and you're going to trigger a cutscene. My last playthrough solo, and... That man Oop. You are speaking with. Thanks, Adaro. From some unknown place. Do they? they just appear without a warning. Not That's not really but true, is it? They look the part, sure enough. They have no capacity to feel nor act alone, so they live as cell sorts. Myrmidons, they now, Myrmidons. Is an encampment west of the village. I'd wager. Why don't you? Before leaving, Myrmidons are actually the soldiers of Achilles, um, and so you're going to find lots and lots for the classicists out there. You're going to find a bit of a blamange of Greek, Roman, uh, medieval English, Dungeons and Dragons, bestiary sort of enemies and bad guys and things like that. But to put us in the picture, this is Rook. Rook is our first pawn, and you can chat to him. Purchasing equipment here in Cassidus will make for a safer trip to the encampment. And he gives you advice, and he tells you to come and purchase some equipment here in Cassidus, which we're going to do. But first of all, I'm going to put on some Not better stuff. Except by day. Are your travel preparations complete? Now, one thing about Rook is he won't shut up. So, coming into Pablos's inn, we meet obviously Pablos. He seems quite diminutive. Oh, hey, Benita, has you picking flowers for her? How? How'd you hear that? The monsters grow bolder by night. If you must leave the village, go prepared. I do not fancy the thought of you going off on your own, but I trust in your judgment. If you come by the inn, you can always rest until the hour you wish to set out. In any case, take care. What can I do you for? Now, he in this game inns are very important places most of the inns um, or many of the inns let you actually adjust your skills and your vocation and stuff like that but this first inn lets you sleep for 50 gold that's the cheapest you're going to be able to sleep anywhere um, which is great so we're going to sleep for 50 gold we can also manage our stored items now in this game you have a huge store um, an unlimited store you can put whatever you want in there and, you, and we're going to find that um, throughout the game, you're going to come into inns and dump stuff that you picked up because you really don't have much carrying weight um, <clears throat> and pull stuff out. So we're going to withdraw here and we're going to change our equipment. Now, I've, I obviously have played through this already, so I've just got a crazy amount of really powerful stuff, um, which is very high level, but I'm going to put it on just for the sake of putting it on. And we'll put on oh let's just put on the sort of outfit you can put on we'll put on let's just put on i don't know dragon band and oh that looks all right the iron lorica and you know what that'll probably i'll we'll put them on Put on the dragon hide braces. We'll put on, and then you can put on some pants. Um, so we can put on a chainmail skirt. We can also put on some strides under it, and of course we can put on a cape. And I picked up a couple of rings that double my. Um, they're called the Ring of Perseverance, and what they do is they double my uh, attack. So, being a dagger wielder, I've also got the fire, so I can use Dragon's Eye, and I can use um, my heated... I can use Dragon's Vein as well if I wanted to. Um, you know what, I'll put the Galvanic Razors on. So I've got 
Now let's have a look. So here's what it look like. So you can see I've got the, the daggers are actually lightning infused daggers and my bow is a flame infused bow. Now over here we've got a notice board and notice boards exist throughout the game. Notice boards are there <clears throat> to give you quests. So in this case you can see you've got a bunch of quests. Defeat some bandits, some goblins, some mice, some rabbits, some saurians. Here we are. Great. So I've picked up all those quests, which means if I go and have a look at my quest list now, they're all there. And I can highlight any one I want, and when I do, that's the quest I'll be doing. I've also picked up... I wonder if I've got any curatives that I saved in here. Okay. I do not, what can I do you for? As you will. I do. So I'm going to grab some green warish which I put in there at the end of the last game. And I'm going to grab some large mushrooms, which I put in there at the end of the last game. Um, and what they do is let me upgrade my health if I need it and upgrade my... I'll show you. Potent Green Warish, um, which will use the junky stuff first. And it, it gives me a fair amount of health back. And the large mushrooms give me a fair amount of stamina back. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do this quest for Benita. And I want to show you that. Now he's going to want to... And one great thing, by the way, when you level up your assassin or strider character, is you get a cool double jump. Like that. Um, first thing I'm going to do is... Come out and we're going to go left because the flowers that she wants are only around the big trees. But when we come out through this gate, we've left the village. And we're now in the wild, as it were. Now there's always some bunnies here. And one of our quests is to be a bunny killer, unfortunately. But here's Sunbright. And a goblin. Here we go. And we've killed our first goblin. Now, you're going to look at a lot of this and think that was that was heaps harder for me if you're not being a warrior. And you're quite right. It will be very hard because it'll be whatever level you are at the moment. But we're just one-shotting most of these things at the moment. And that's all right. It's more about showing you how to get through it. Now, when you pick up materials, so those are my curatives. And these are my materials. You can see Sunbright's one of the materials. But also, Cloud Wine, if I combine that with something, I can combine it with, for example, um, Potent Green Warish to make Matured Green Warish, which is nice. And if I grab the Wormwood Sap, I can combine this to make Desiccated Herbs. Now, if I have a look at what that is, it weighs 0.23, but it consumes a fair bit of health. Over here, there's going to be a chest. Have a look in it. If you don't want the stuff that's in the chests, ignore them. We'll take the small coin pouch. We want to go to that tree, but I want to show you some stuff first. So first of all, there's another chest over here. Oh, we got a coin pouch. I'm not going to game any of these early chests. In fact, I won't game any chests until we get to the DLC. Um, and here, we've now picked up enough flowers for her. So we're going to come back down to the road which is just here to your left. And we're going to walk back. Now, sometimes on these logs, you can pick up stuff. So, for example, kindling, <clears throat> mushrooms, more kindling. And if I have a look at the kindling, I can make an oil arrow, or I could make a pickaxe. If I have a look at
the flamica I can make spicy mushroom tea which is really nice and you can see that spicy mushroom tea um, cures you if you're frozen solid this road will have us to the encampment air much longer. walking back I can see my boy is in trouble and I'm just gonna take them out but we're gonna run up and save him and say hi to Renard. Oh. Oh, that was far too close. It sure was, mate. I'm called Renard, a traveling salesman. Though those damnable beasts ruined my wares, but thanks to you, oh, I'm so sorry. The only wares I lost. And he gives you a cape, which is really nice of him. Sorry, bunny, but you're out of here. And you can see that by killing the bunnies, you get 500 XP. Now, if you do all these quests that I'm doing, you should all, and you're on hard mode, you should almost be up at level 4 before we even leave to go to the encampment. But that's it. That's all the bunnies we have to kill, which is great. I don't like killing the bunnies. Come back inside. So we've got the daytime flowers. We'll give those to Benita. We found the sunbright. A wounded need med, I ask you. Ah, oh, brought the rest of them, have you? Yeah, mate. My thanks, Carl. Oh, happy to help, Benita. All that remains is to find some moon glow. Moon glow, huh? Well, sunbright happened in the day. Let's see what this this girl has to say. Where do the curing flowers grow? Hmm. Have you had a look by the shore? If not now, by night, perhaps? I recall seeing some. The eve of the last full moon. Hmm, moon glow found by the shore at night. Okay, so gonna come back in here. Rest. I I do not if you come by then, what can I do you for? You sing time. Rest till nightfall? And come back out at night time. And we're going to come down here and see that crack in the wall. That means that's where we're going. So here, for example, I can, if you see fish close to the shore, you can gather them up and they will actually, if, or you can either get a fishing bob or fish. But if I start to walk towards the ocean, I go red, and that means you're about to die. So turn around and go back. It's a very useful mechanic. We will, for ex and you can. Oh, one thing it's done is if you have a look next to my green health bar, there's a little picture, and you can see water dripping off me. That means I'm drenched. And drenched means I move slower, um, and I use more stamina getting around the place. But here's the moon glow right here. Just past the moon glow, don't forget it, is a little chest. Come and grab some Harpsford juice. And there's another little chest up here. We're not going to touch that. That's going to summon a dragon. We don't want that. This is a New Game Plus thing. Touching this unique rift stone will allow us to battle what's called the Ur Dragon. And the Ur Dragon is a particularly nasty online dragon. And you can fight it, well, you can fight online or offline, but if you fight it online, um, you end up fighting it with a community. So you'll, you know, you'll see how many other people have fought it, and you contribute to that, etc. And it's a great way to get some fantastic uh, weapons and armor and items. But we won't be doing that till way later in the game, when we're like level 200 or something. Um, so up here, back to Benita, now that we've got the moon glow. And hand over the moon glow. The one. You found it. Me and Benny Goodman both. Moon glow has grown rare in these parts of late. Tis a relief to see it. Good. That's the both of them. Yay. The truth, I am surprised to see them got so quickly. I'll get to work directly. With luck, we'll have everyone back to Elthia long. Tis your doing, cousin. I fear there's little I can offer you in thanks. 
Save this. Pray, take it. Now to make some medicine. So she's helped us out. And given us a green warish. And we're going to save till dawn. Oop. There we are. Save till morning, and we'll leave this episode here, and come back next time for another couple of quests around Cassidus before we push on. See ya!